we're going to go into some detail on binge eating disorders or bed, not the kind of bed that's fun to be in. Hey, what's shaking bacon? My name is Bruno Panucci. I hope you're doing well. So I have a history of binge eating disorder, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I've already touched on it in another video, but I want to go into more detail about it. Now, I think a lot of people can relate to this, especially when they have a history of just being overweight. This often goes hand in hand with a carbohydrate addiction. So before we get into too much detail about that, I ask that you like, comment, and subscribe to this video. I've taken the commercials out of the videos, so it's easier for you to sit through these videos. I want to make sure people don't get bored of this information. So anyway, Back to the topic. So I have a history of binge eating disorder and it's something, like I said, that goes hand in hand with carbohydrates. Now, when you have a carbohydrate addiction, it's not only just being addicted to carbohydrates, but often you eat too much. You sit and have too much. Maybe it's alcohol that you're addicted to. Maybe that's your carbohydrate of choice. Maybe it's pizza or pasta or bread of some kind. And maybe it's just sugar, straight up sugar. But what happens, it's not just that you're eating it. It's, there's nothing wrong if you can moderate those things in life. But if you have trouble giving it up, there's a problem you, you might need to work out. And as well, if you have trouble with the portion sizes when you have that, that's a separate problem from just the sugar and carbohydrate addiction. So I had both, which is a really bad combination because not only was I having junk food, I was making meals of my junk food. It wasn't a little treat like you're supposed to have every now and then, maybe once or twice a week, or some people once a month. Or some people, maybe it's once a day. But for me, it was a meal. I wouldn't have ice cream. I would have a huge container of ice cream or three small containers of ice cream. I wouldn't have a pizza. I had a pizza bigger than my body. I loved pizza. And boy, I just couldn't stop. And I wasn't satisfied till I was stuffed. I was addicted to being stuffed. And the thing about a binge eating disorder is it's not only a larger amount of food than you should be eating, but you're having it in a short window of time. So you're eating really fast. You're probably not chewing your food very well, right? You're eating it very fast and it's often done in private. Now, depending on how well people know you, you might even do this in front of other people and not even feel awkward about it. And me, boy, I wasn't feeling awkward about it at all. I barely chewed my food. And one thing carnivore with multiple small meals taught me when I did that challenge was how to slow down and chew my food and savor it a little bit more. But like I said, this is also a lack of control. You see that pizza in front of you and that's all you want to have. You're not satisfied till you stuffed yourself with it. And some people, a couple slices can stuff them and maybe that's binging for them. But I happen to be a big guy with a big appetite and boy, it was a bad combination. So binge eating episodes are associated with three of the more following things and I've already touched on them eating more rapidly than normal, you know, it means you're not chewing your food, eating to the point where you're stuffed, where actually you can be uncomfortable. And I used to do that all the time. Every meal was my last meal. That was the addiction. I had more than one addiction. It wasn't just sugar craving. It was an addiction to being full and binge eating. Another one is even when you're not too hungry, you still binge. And like I touched on earlier, they say it's often when you're eating alone. Now, I would do that with ice cream because I would have a ridiculous amount of ice cream or cake when I had desserts. But when it came to fuel, I would be around my family and quite often I was eating that way around family events too. So it's not just when you're eating alone. It's also when you're eating with people that you're comfortable with who already know your eating habits. My family grew up with my eating habits. They all just saw it and accepted it for what it was. I ate a lot. Now, when I was a teenager, I got in pretty good shape and I was burning it all off. So it wasn't an issue. They just like, well, you know, he's eating like a teenager. It makes sense. I was pretty athletic. When I got older, those habits didn't stop, but the activity did slow down. I wasn't as consistent with it because back then I was very consistent with weight training and just being active and doing a lot of cardio in different forms, whether it's martial arts or riding my bicycle anywhere, because typically my bicycle was my main mode of transportation until I was 19. I was happy riding a bicycle everywhere. So one of the other issues is also feeling guilty or disgusted with yourself, or maybe even feeling a little depressed after you've done an episode like that. So I never really felt depressed and I never felt disgusted with myself and I should have been. But if there's one thing I often felt was guilt. Now, it wasn't like I sat there and thought, why did I do that to myself? It wasn't like that. But I thought, man, I was trying to be good. And then I just gave right in. I shouldn't have ordered that food to begin with, or I shouldn't have made that food to begin with. And I gave in to the temptation and knowing I was going to have a lot of it, I gave in to it. 
So I did feel guilt because I knew I needed to correct that problem. I didn't recognize it as an actual disorder, but I knew I was binging when I was trying to be good. When I wasn't trying to be good, unfortunately, I just didn't care. But it was an issue either way, whether I was trying to be good or I wasn't trying to be good, I was still eating way too much. And sometimes I felt that guilt and that guilt can put you in the cycle of, well, I'm already off my special diet or the way I was eating or carnivore. So, you know, I'll start again tomorrow and then tomorrow turns into the next day and then the next day. Next thing you know, it's like, I'll start Monday. Then I'll start at the beginning of the month. Oh, now the new year. And you start making excuses for your addiction. And that's the problem because this goes into our next issue because you're typically doing it once a day or at the most once every three days. So if you're doing this frequently, it shows that it's a habit. If someone binges on something every now and then, it doesn't mean it's a problem, but when it's a regular occurrence, that's a good indication that you're dealing with binge eating disorder. So here's the issue. When I used to do intermittent fasting years ago, I would go into a binge after I broke my fast and then it would feel like I wasn't even doing carnivore afterwards. So when you have a healthy metabolism, I think you can eat one meal a day and even a large meal if you're not dealing with sugar or carbohydrate addiction and you might be fine. You could probably eat whatever you want if you're an active enough person. But if you're not that active, you have to be more restricted and more reserved with the type of fuel you're getting in. And that's where carnivore helps with most people. But even then, going back into binge eating after say something like a fast, I still wasn't feeling optimal because my insulin still went up too long and too high, even though my blood sugar was good, it took too long for my insulin to come back down and it created an inflammatory process. And I was dealing with joint stiffness the next day. It's not like I was dealing with gut rot afterwards because you just eat till you're satisfied with carnivore. But when you can have three or four or five pounds of meat in one sitting, you can easily create that crash. If you have a crash after you eat on a carnivore diet and you're only having protein and fat, you're having an insulin spike. And that means your insulin still isn't in a good spot. So you wanna make sure that afterwards, you're watching your binging. If you're breaking any type of fast, you wanna ease back into your food. I notice I don't have to binge anymore after I fast. I ease into my meals and I have small portions and I have a few portions at that. And I have a few portions throughout the day. I'm not necessarily gonna binge. I still binge every now and then. I'll binge on bacon, guaranteed I'll binge on bacon. If there's a few pounds of bacon sitting there, I'll eat it. So I try to watch my bacon intake because of that. But I do it so infrequently, I'm not too worried about that anymore. It's something I basically have control over. But when it's a regular occurrence, that's a different story. But binging is something we all have to watch out for, especially when we're doing carnivore. If you don't have this issue and you don't mind just having a big meal and you're an active person, because lots of people when they do carnivore, they do cut down to one or two meals a day or they have a shorter eating window. That's different. I'm talking about people who have an addictive quality to this. And if you find it's something you can't stop, maybe you need to stop and reassess. I know I have, and it's an issue I have to work on. Now I seem to have it under control, for the most part, it's something that doesn't bother me day to day, but I'm glad I went to multiple small meals. That's another benefit I had when I went to a high fat carnivore diet. It didn't necessarily work for weight loss. It helped in other ways. And one of those ways is it helped get my binging under control. Don't get me wrong. I can still eat a lot, but I don't eat four racks of ribs from a restaurant. I'll have one or two racks of ribs. And that sounds like a lot for you guys out there in YouTube land, but for me, that's way better. And it's going to continue going in that direction. As always, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful. I really appreciate it if you leave a comment and subscribe. Thanks a lot and take care.